Hello everyone, for this video will be on ISO and what it is and how it affects certain aspects of photography and when is it best used. So why is ISO? In photography, ISO refers to camera sensitivity, the camera's sensitivity to light as it pertains to either film or digital sensor. So a lower camera value ISO value, pardon me, means less sensitivity to light and higher so higher ISO meaning more sensitivity to light. So each camera has a range of values. Every camera has a range of value, ISO values. So the lowest number is often at a hundred, but each time it goes up, it's typically doubled each value it goes up so but it does vary on camera some style have low base of 50 and some have values like 150 or 140 as their lowest base value so it depends what camera you get and you can get it from the higher shop to learn how to use a camera and see the settings and again this this is very useful for someone who doesn't really have much experience with photography or is a beginner let's say so they could learn about what each setting does and exposure triangles typically affect certain aspects of photography in some ways but sometimes it doesn't so which i'll get into the aperture as i've mentioned and i have done a video on that anyway so is all the size of the lens opening the shutter speed which is the exposure time in seconds which i will do in the, like a couple videos time so you might see the video within the next couple weeks after this one and the ISO is what we're looking at today is the dark is the light sensitivity so it affects the noise of the camera which I'll get into so you need to pay attention stay tuned so the dark the lower as you know the lowest meaning the darkest and the lightest highest meaning the lightest in terms of the ISO and ISO comparisons so that's what the first photo is it's basically zoomed in I think it's a tree bark or something and the hundreds is basically when there's the photos darkened and the twelve thousand eight hundred is basically quite grainy so it's very difficult to pretty much see the details of the image so that means it's, it's, there's a lot of noise in the background it's overexposed it's not overexposed but it's just too grainy to see and same with the high so for the sunset image i think that's more it looks more like a vintage postcard or something a retro photograph using a polaroid camera or something i don't know because it's very but with the low iso you can still see the details of the image because the settings are low because it's darker in terms of how to see the photo And as I said meant before in the beginning, one of the two first slides I said that the higher the ISO, the more grainy or exposed it is, and the lowest is a hundred. So each value goes up by double. So and 
how does it affect the depth of field? Well, the depth field only or mainly affects the aperture and it does affect the shutter speed because it compensates on the lenses being big or small. But it does not affect the ISO value as you can see here. So how does ISO affect the shutter speed? So basically, well it does in some way. Because the ISO does, in this image it stays the same. But the ISO, the shutter speed keeps changing. So meaning that the image changes itself. So you can see that the colours have changed in terms of how light they colour and light or dark. So each so I think it go each time it goes the shutter speed's quicker. The colour becomes darker. And if it's slow it becomes lighter. Or oh, that's the opposite sorry, I mean the opposite way around. So the ISO camera settings will indicate how much light is needed to be to be able to produce an image, it means that the higher the ISO, the faster the shutter speed will be. So in low light situations, the same apertures could be used. So basically, you don't need to change the aperture. You just change the shutter speed and that's it. And the ISO could stay the same as well because it's just the shutter speed that changes in this photo as well. So it creates a new look for the image. But I would say, I don't know where the origin, the original one, let's say if I know, I could tell. If anyone could guess where the original one is, I would be happy, you know. But my guess for the original, I would say it's around 30. Or 60, between 60 and 30. Because if it's on 250, it would be too dark. And you won't. And if it's. Because it's overexposed. Because you changed the shutter speed. It made it more quick. So it didn't give enough time. For the bottom one, I mean. It didn't give enough time for it to be. The image to move, basically. It just. Cut the duration. It just shortened it basically and it created the image it made the image more exposed or more blurry and you can't see the rim anymore of the candle the circle bit of the candle you can't see most of it it's actually very super exposed there and the low and then that's very low in terms of the number and I think it makes it creates more shadows. I'm not the expert, but it creates more shadow. And so how does it affect exposure, which is what we're getting on to now? So to answer this question, it does not simply the ISO does not simply influence the exposure because these values are only made for shutter speed and aperture, which in turn can capture a certain amount of light in a given lighting situation. But it does inf influence the final image quality by controlling the darkness of the image using the exposure as a value as a base. So that's what basically happens in this image of a concert. And you can see the light is controlled. You can see how it looks because it does affect some aspects of it. I think the reason why it affects exposure in some way is because of the amount of noise that's in, the amount of image noise, background noise it is. Otherwise, it would be grainy. And you can't see much of it. 
So how does low ISO affect images? So it creates high quality photos, as we all know, because we did learn about that. In the... And bright conditions like sunny days or outdoor shoots benefit from a lower ISO value because you can see the image more clearly without it being too exposed. And another thing that benefits from it is light landscape, landscape photography. So it keeps photos from looking overly exposed or washed out. So you don't want that because then it'll be difficult to see the image and the image might look too too muted the colors might be too muted for the kind of quality you're going with and another benefit from having a low iso low iso is the lack of graininess or noise in your photos so every time you raise the iso the, it results in a similar decrease in image quality which is why photo shots with higher isos can produce unwanted graininess so you do need to be mindful of what that will consist of if you turn up the eyes because you don't want the image to look grainy and you do want to produce good photos and people might be able to look at with pleasure and look at the photos with pleasure and saying that wow that photo looks stunning type so you need to have, you need to know what that consists of. You can play around with the settings if you're quite new to photography. But photography is not my area, but I have done it in the past. But I'm just raising awareness about ISO and what it is and stuff. So when it should be, when should ISO really be used? So preferably it's better off being used in the daytime because you have control of how much light is used. As you can darken or lighten the image by changing the ISO value. But it's better to keep the image more darker because as I mentioned, the exposure, you're letting in too much noise if you add the ISO value up or times it by two which is basically what it is you are able to get stunning high quality photos without any noise or graininess which I have which is to be as you all know and for nighttime photography is users would have to use a high ISO value to get the image they want. But it's really difficult to do that because images at night will be harder to detect. It will be harder to take photos at night anyway. And it will result to the image being so pitch black because you won't be able to see what the subject really is if the image is so f it's very dark and almost to the point is when it's pitch black so that's if you use the same settings because you can't do that you just might as well not take any photos if that's going to be the case so here are the references so i hope you enjoyed this video video and learned something new about it i know it's not easy for me to explain but i am grateful that people are, are actually watching my videos but i'm hoping to get more subscribers i don't know how many really but this year i would say but i'm hoping to get more subscribers and allow people to watch my videos and stay tuned for more videos that will help with them to become the best it can be. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.